everyone, I'm Lubomira, and thank you for joining me. If you're visiting for the first time, welcome to my channel, and if you are returning, it's so good to have you back. Here on this channel, I show you how I combine various card making techniques with elements made with the Cricut. Now, if you don't have a Cricut, that's okay. There are many ways of substituting the things I make with other products you may have in your stash. This video shows you how I make an element using Cricut Design Space to later be used in a card. If you're interested in the card tutorial, you can find a link to that video in the description below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. By clicking that notification bell, you'll be notified every time I upload a video. Butterflies have been really popular lately, so I wanted to get in on the fun and make something with them too. Today I'm going to be making a butterfly cover plate. When done, it can be used as itself or even a stencil. So let's get into the program. The first thing I do is insert a rectangle and size it to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I then duplicate this rectangle and change the color so I can see it better. The color really doesn't matter, but I choose a light gray. Next, I select the image icon in the left-hand side toolbar. This will take us to the Cricut image library. I already did a search for butterflies. I refined my search to include only free images under the ownership tab in the filter. I chose a solid, simple image because this will work best. I don't want too many small, intricate parts. I insert the image and return to the grid. I duplicate the butterfly so that I have three of these images and I resize them so that one is an inch, another is three quarters of an inch, and the last is a half an inch tall. You'll see me duplicating these images as I go along. I take my rectangle and start to place the butterflies. Make sure that the rectangle is sent to the back layer of your grid so that you can place the butterflies on top of it rather than behind it. I start with the largest butterfly and duplicate it several times. I randomly place each of the duplicates over the panel. I rotate the images so that the butterflies are facing different directions. Next, I take the middle size butterfly and the small butterfly and repeat the process. I adjust the spacing so that no butterflies touch and I let them overhang the side of the panel.
When I'm done, my panel is completely filled with butterflies. In the right-handed layering panel, I scroll until I find the gray panel my butterflies are sitting on. I make it invisible by clicking the eye next to it. The gray panel disappears on my grid, leaving only the butterflies. After my panel disappears, I select the butterflies using my cursor, then weld them together. Once they are welded, you'll notice that they become one image in the layering panel on the right. I make my panel visible by clicking the eye again. Then I select the butterflies and that panel and slice them together. Once sliced, I'm only interested in the negative space panel and delete all the unneeded layers that I've created. I just keep the butterfly outline. I want to create a frame around the butterflies. To do this, I insert two squares and resize them. The first I resize to four and three quarters by six inches. I change the width to five and the program automatically keeps the proportion since the size is locked. This is really not that important since I'll be resizing the final product anyway. The second I resize to 4.2 by 5.45, only slightly smaller than my original butterfly panel. This one is important because I want the panel to overlap the frame slightly so it can weld properly. I select the two rectangles once they're sized and center them using the alignment tool, then slice to create a frame. I delete the center piece, leaving the frame. Next, I select my butterfly panel and the frame, center them using the alignment tool, and then weld them together. I resize it to a standard A2 size, but I can make it as large or as small as I'd like later on. This completes my cover plate. I hope you enjoyed this video. Tune into my next video to see how I use this butterfly cover plate in a card. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. And remember to hit that bell so you don't miss any of my new videos. See you next time. Bye.